Okay, so final Q&A session for today. Uh, if you've got questions, again, please raise your hand, name and company, and we'll bring a mic to you. Um, I've got a couple of questions to get us started, and uh, Glenn, I, I know you talked about this, but I would like you to kind of come back to it and maybe elaborate a bit further. How confident are you of your ability to deliver a hard number that's unduplicated? Can you kind of elaborate a bit more on how you constructed that unduplicated number or the, within the brand report, the, the number that is not just the gross of the sum? Yeah. Well, to, today there are channels that you cannot deduplicate. Right. Social media is a perfect example. So the media owner is never going to be able to identify who I suppose they could through LinkedIn because people are real named people, but in things like Twitter and Facebook, that's not necessarily the case. So there will always be some channels that you cannot integrate. But otherwise, the data that we're providing where it is integrated, the publisher or a third party vendor has created a database and now taking registration information from all the other channels, the email newsletter, the white paper downloads, the webinar attendance, uh, the trade show attendance, and so on. And that all filters into one database, and then we perform audit checks on that database to make sure that the number of uniques are, in fact, unique. And then the added value at the end is we confirm back with the subscriber the information that's being held. So through the various tests, checks, and balances, uh, we're confident that the number that's being presented, once it's audited, is a, is a valid number. Right. And how, how common is that methodology within kind of the global uh, audience uh, measurement? Because um, you mentioned the kind of initiative you were suggesting through FIP and through the IA. Uh, is that a, a, a point of view that's becoming far more common, or where are we in that journey and getting it there? Well, the, the FIP, IA, and IFABC point was about the digital versions, which right. is just one of the channels. I okay. think we need to have a standard there before we can take it to the next step. With respect to integration, there are more and more, um, I'll say, intelligence companies that are springing up that are helping publishers make sense of the data that they hold mm. and putting it into an integrated environment. Having said that, I would say I could count on two hands the number of who are doing it today. Right. Okay. So, Denise, uh, you talked a lot about the opportunity in brand, and obviously to a certain extent that also depends on some form of a measurement or a data conversation. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, uh, uh, I think there's several times in the conversations of the sessions we've had with the breakouts where we've kind of talked about something that's been a topic for a while. And I think the idea of digital and brand has actually been around for at least uh, five or ten years and really hasn't moved. What's stopping it? Where, what's the biggest obstacle to getting brands to actually believe, despite whatever studies we come up with that say digital and, and brand do work, uh, the, num the needle hasn't moved much. Absolutely. So I think there's two reasons that we can point to. One is that we make it really hard to buy digital, right? When somebody wants to buy non-digital advertising, they typically talk to a sales rep and, uh, and they, they agree on a price and, and an amount and, and then there's, a, there's some kind of fax or I.O. or maybe it's automated and it's done. But when you talk to a lot of the buyers, they'll say it takes up to 10 times longer to buy digital and the budgets are smaller. And frankly, in a, lot, in a lot of cases, they're not sure it's worth the effort. When you look at buying digital, it's a different group. You have to figure out platforms. You, you often need multiple different creatives. And then when you look at the digital advertising technologies out there, there's something called the Lumascape. And there are literally hundreds of vendors on, on that paper. So who do you go to? As a technology vendor, frankly, we haven't made it easy. The second, the second point is that historically, at, when people talked about internet advertising, it related to a click. And as I mentioned earlier, brands, they are not measured by clicks. So they would come back and say, well, it's not working. We didn't get clicks. And there was no way previously to measure brand recognition online. But now there are companies out there that, that do that. As I mentioned, Moat is, is one of the prominent uh, vendors in the States. Um, there, there are plenty of other vendors in the space here. Um, Bird is one in Europe. Spider, I think, does viewability. And then there's others in, in Asia as well. So now those metrics are available and the brands are starting to notice. So I'm familiar with Moet. Uh, they're a vendor of one of the companies that I'm involved with. It's, it's a, as much to do with around dwell and viewability, but you're saying that those are direct indicators of, of brand impact. Is that kind of the connection or are there other factors that I'm kind of not really <laughs> filling in? No, 
know, I think you're right. I think if somebody's dwelling on it and they're interacting with the ad, chances are there's going to be recall there. So while it's not, uh, while it's not apples to apples with the old brand recall studies that you would do offline, right. that's about as close as we can get online. Okay. Um, Glenn, in respect to kind of again on the, uh, uh, the initiative that you're working on in digital, uh, what part is the IAB taking in, the, uh, in, your, in your suggestion? Are you, I'm, I know you're actively talking to the IAB, but uh, where's the differential between what you're proposing and their pers uh, current perspective? Well, the IAB is for the web. Right. And the digital is not web. Right. It is digital versions that are either for tablets or PCs or what have you. Um, so they're not involved in the discussion at all. Right. Where we do work with the IAB is on uh, items related to the web, of which most recently, what is a viewable impression is mm. a very, very hot topic. Right. And MMA and other industry associations, obviously the acronym soup can continue forever. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think we've had this conversation around uh, trying to get a bit more of an umbrella so you get buy-in from the kind of broader uh, industry. Um, and I, I just, to an extent, you know, Denise said it, it's difficult. <laughs> Digital isn't as easy as simply making a decision and going forward. There seems to be too, so many people kind of pulling it different directions. How uh, confident are you of making progress soon? I know you've had some uh, frustration in getting it to this point. <laughs> uh, what's next steps? Where do we move from here? Well, I, I think it's, it's a big first step that the MPA is now recommending to its media owners that they disclose actual engagement with the digital product. Right. I think that's a huge first step because otherwise in the U.S. there are very few publishers who are willing to show that these copies are actually open. Right. So if you have, you know, the tide begins to roll forward now, then I think it, it has a chance to carry on. With FIP, with the um, IFABC, and with the IAA, all of mm. them have models where they have national organizations that now feed up into the global organization. So the suggestion is that the global organizations collect the information from the national and then build consensus and come up with what would be now the global recommended standard. So I, I would say I'm not optimistic that it would be done in 2013, right. but I don't think it should be too long in 14 if we're able to take this up. Okay. Um, Denise, can you talk, you mentioned the Forbes example, can you maybe talk a little bit more about some other publishers who may be either uh, more on the consumer side or possibly more deeper into B2B specialists uh, that are using some of the tools that you're talking about to also uh, advantage or move their business model forward? Sure, on the consumer side, uh, one of the publishers we work with quite a bit is The Guardian right. in the UK. And the way that we're helping out The Guardian is to drive uh, rich media ads on their website, whether it be tablet, mobile, et cetera. So in, in a specific case, and actually you can see this on The Guardian website, uh, Virgin Atlantic had an ad where they allowed users to slide the toggle to, to find out different points about their loyalty program. So you could look at their, their limousine service, their lounges, et cetera. And when they first put the advertisement on, the Guardian was about to lose the buy because it just wasn't, it wasn't performing, people weren't interacting. So they actually used Maxifier's platform to take all of that audience data, that engagement data, and use optimization to make sure that the ad was being served to an audience that was more likely to interact, so more likely to travel, more likely uh, to be traveling first class, that they would have the limousine service or, or the lounge. And they went from being eight out of 10 on a plan to being second. Right. And not only did Virgin keep them on the plan, that they, they then increased their budget time after time in subsequent advertising cycles. Excellent. Okay, we're about to wind down uh, this session. If you have a question, please get your hand up because we're probably uh, about to close and kind of move into our last coffee break of the afternoon. Um, looks, like we're, uh, looks like we've answered your questions so far, so it leaves me really only just to say thanks again for our speakers this uh, session. Please give a round of applause for Denise and, and to Glenn.